Hello, we're back. Is our audio good? Hello, everyone. Can you hear us? OK, so now we're demonstrating packaging a thing so that it can be installed. And of this, I'm typing, and Marijn is telling me what to type. So yes, <laughs> I will take the lead. Let's get to it. So thank you, Richard. Yeah. So packaging. Packaging basically means um, trying to organize your project in such a way that other people can quickly install it. So you're doing packaging well when somebody comes to you and says, well, how do I use your code in my project? You can tell them, oh, you just pip install it. Or you just have one line. The, the shorter your installation instructions are, um, the better your packaging is. So, and, That's a good uh, point, Python, yeah. <laughs> Python, uh, Python like... presents a few options of us um, to us. We'll, we'll explore a few of them. So, yeah. so what if you just have a single a single file, for example, with, with some functions in it. Uh, Richard, how would you share that? Or do we have so, any yeah. issues already? A single file. Um, I guess if it's that small, I might just leave it as it is and say, if you need it, then like whatever, clone the Git repository. I have several projects like this, which are so small, I haven't bothered trying to package them. and like it's cloned and sort of run manually. So, so do I. If it's just a few functions in a file, you just say, well, installation is you take this file, you put it in your project folder and you import. Yeah. And we, we call it a module um, when it's just a single file. But what if it's um, multiple files? So if, if it's a single file, you can just import and then the name of the file as we have seen. Mm -hmm. But say you have like 20 files, um, yeah, if your installation instructions as well, you have to do 20 import statements in order to use them. That's going to be very annoying very quickly. Yeah. Um, so maybe we can uh, create a few files or, uh, okay. or Richard, you can create a few. Too. Yeah. So are you seeing my screen through the Jitsi? Um, let's see, I can. I'd recommend uh, opening that so you yes, can I'm, see. I'm going to do that. OK, so are we doing? We're starting with the demo, and I'm adding these files here. Actually, let's back up. So I'm starting, and I'm making a brand new uh, package here. So here I am. Uh, I'll change to my Git directory. What will we call this thing we're making? Let's, um, let's call it a packaging project. So, so our, our module is going to be called a calculator, but we're, we're going to name this folder something uh, else. Mm. But, uh, you will see why later. OK. So, so say we have now, uh, let's quickly create three files. So say we have uh, add and subtract. And yeah. uh, So I will make these. Can just basically copy paste them. Yeah, so just, these are simple things that we just have something to work with. right? Say so. Our, our project now has uh, three files. Each file contains some code. So if I now would want to reuse these files in another project or give them to somebody else, this person will have to do three import statement: import uh, subtracting, adding, import uh, integrating. Um, so if you want to now make it like a single import statement, for example, if, well, if you import NumPy, you don't have to import everything. You can just import NumPy, and it works. Um, this is what Python calls a package. So each file, Python calls a module. Uh, and when we want to bundle them all together as one thing, we call it a package. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is we just drop them into a new folder. So you can, okay. if you want to bundle this up, you can just oh, create a folder with, with a name. And the name of the folder will be the name of our package. It's, it's going to be what we, will, we yeah. will be importing. So what should it be called? So do a um, calculator. Did I spell that right? Yeah. OK. So yes, That's... now we have a calculator folder. OK. We can just dump uh, all the, the, the Python files in there. OK, so I moved them into the calculator folder. Yeah. So I'm running a lot of Linux commands here. You don't need mm -hmm. to worry about that. We're saying 
what we're doing and arranging stuff. Mm. Could yeah. also do this in Windows. Just create folder, drop the files in there. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're almost done. Um, but now it's just three Python files in the folder. There's one thing we need to do to actually make it a Python package, and that is to create one special magic file inside our folder, inside our calculator folder. And this is called underscore underscore init underscore underscore. Yeah. So this these underscores indicate this is a like super magic special file. Yeah, it's basically and, just a Python convention. Yes, you can you can actually leave it empty. So you've now already pasted uh, stuff in there, which is good. Yeah. Um, but just to uh, to note, I mean, just the presence of the file makes it a Python a Python package. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless. Like, of maybe I would say having the init file tells Python that a directory is importable and yeah. can be considered like a package, something like exactly. that. Yeah. OK. Um, but, but now let's, let's go to your file, because you pasted something in there. Let's, um, yeah. let's, let's show you people what, what you've pasted. Uh, the init. Yeah, but yeah. The, like, this code, there are. Wait, what, so this, what this init want? is this magic file that indicates this is a package. But the init is also the entry point to the package. Mm -hmm. So if we, um, well, without the init, you, you could import calculator, but then if you want to actually use our files, you would actually have to, have to still manually import them. You have to say, okay, from, uh, well, the, the, the functions would be named calculating, uh, calculator.adding.add, calculator.subtracting.subtract, which can be mm -hmm. a, a little bit annoying. Um, so one of the cool things you could do in the init is uh is is add import instructions right in your init file so the init file will be run whenever you import your package the init file will be run so these these import commands will will run so if i run import calculator like you see here then this gives us or gives us calculate.add because the calculator module when you import calculator, it gives you this init file. And this yeah. init file has imported add, subtract, and integral from these submodules. Yes. Okay. Without them, you would have to do calculator.adding.add. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. You also put a version string in there. That's also very useful. So now you would have a, a calculator dot underscore underscore. Um, version as well. So, and any variables and any functions that you declare inside this init function, that there will also be part of the package. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Should we go? Okay. On? But, so, uh, so now we can import a calculator. So we try. So we quickly try that. So if you, if you just open up a Python, can we now import calculator? Okay. So we did quick, it actually works. So now uh, we have. It. Yeah, calculator. So this shows yeah. us that the calculator module itself is located at calculator init.py. Yes. See, init is our entry point here. Yeah. Okay, and all our functions should be in there, right? Well, we have yeah. adding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we don't need to manually import now calculator.adding, right? Yeah. Our init file should have taken care of that and should all be there. So we have add yep. directly. Okay. Okay. Um, so now it's already better, right? So now if you want to tell somebody else, okay, how do I use your code? Well, you here, here is this, uh, mm -hmm. this folder and um, you put this folder of files, you put that into your project. Um, and as long as that folder is there, you can import it. Um, mm -hmm. We can go, we can, we, can, we, can, we can go even further, of course. And we can say, well, um, you can just pip install it. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. Yeah. Try to get it pip installable. Let's see. Should I maybe I should say down? yeah. May maybe I should say well the so so for now the ins uh, the installation instructions are put you put this folder inside your code your own code folder your own project you're working with. Mm -hmm. um, but this is of course not very nice. So if you if you have multiple projects that reuse the same code, you now have to basically copy paste this same folder in all your uh, all, all the locations where you want to use it. 
Um, of course, Python has a central location. So if you if you if you put this folder in Python's central location, which is Python called site packages, then it will be available for mm. any time. Right? This is where your NumPy lives. This is where your Matplotlib lives. Yeah. Uh, your Jupyter lives. Um, so let's see if we can make it um, easier to 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 install the package. So when, when we say now installing the package, basically it means you take this folder and you copy it to your site packages. And, and Python can do it for us and, and, and provides mechanisms okay. to do this. Yeah. Um, and, and the entry point to that is, is another type of special file, um, which we call setup.py. This is the mechanism Python uses to make a, a package installable. So you can just tell the package, okay, intel, install yourself into the central location that Python has. So we can use it everywhere. Okay. So is this what I'm doing now? Yeah. So I'm making a setup.py with yeah. these contents. Let me see. Let's hope the paste works. Yes, it worked. Yeah. So what are the Maybe main you can show us a little bit, uh... features of this? So setup tools is somehow the common thing that's used yeah mm. it, it provides the the setup function that we call below yeah it's trying to open a readme file and we'll use that as the description of the package i guess we'll need to add that readme for it to work oh yeah that that's a nice shortcut that we usually do so since your project probably if you put it on github and stuff will have a readme file you can use that as the long description of the package why not so just yeah okay open the file. okay so, so we should also remember to make a readme file so this yeah. this actually works and this name is the name you use to install it via pip which has to be unique so that's why it says put your own name in there the author yeah so put your own name in there's not a general recommendation oh. um you can just name it like however you want to name it. Um, but since the, 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 the name calculator is probably already taken on <laughs> PyPy, so yeah. later on, so we will add something unique to it just so we don't clash with existing packages. But yeah. you, can, you can name it everything you want. Yeah. I'm leaving off the author email, no which way. even though it says it's needed in practice, I've noticed it's not. OK, there's a short description, a small example package. I'll leave that. Yeah. Here we see the long description being added in. It's being told that the long description is marked down. URL. Well, yeah, we, we don't have a website yet, but if you have one, you can put it there. Yeah. Packages. Okay. That so, is a special one. Hmm. Yeah. So there could be in, in inside the folder, we, we could have bump, we could bundle multiple packages together. And say so one of the the bigger ones is, i think if you have like a scipy or something like the bigger ones they these are projects that actually consist of multiple packages um mm -hmm. and so basically what the setup call needs is, well okay what's the list of packages that you want bundled into one thing so if you if you do install on this what should i install um and you can usually leave it like this um because setup tools provides this convenience function find packages that will just look at what's there inside this folder what packages are there Okay. That's the packages you want. And I think 99% of the cases, that's exactly right. You want yeah. the packages that, that are inside your folder. And that's okay. it. Sounds good. So install requires, I guess this is the dependencies. So we're saying that SciPy is needed. Yes, I think our integration function depends on SciPy. Yes. Just to illustrate how do you denote package dependencies. So. Yeah. And can we have classifier lists? Yeah. These are like tags or something. You can find some big list of what they mean online and find the ones that are appropriate. It might be like scientific mm -hmm. software, this or that, whatever. Exactly. What platforms does it run? Does it run on, on a Mac? Or... Yeah. I think here it says always oh, independent. It will run wherever Python runs. Yeah. Will run. And then Python requires. So I guess that's sort of obvious. Yeah. OK, so this is it. Okay, that I looks will. good. So now let's not forget to make a readme file, otherwise this oh uh, yes. Our, our long description will not work. Maybe let's do calculator. Okay. 
Okay, there All we right. go. So now that we have this set up the pi. Okay. So the setup the pi actually operates now as a script. This is now our installation script. The setup the pi. So we we can run it. You can just try it. Python. If you yeah. go to the command line and say Python set up the pi. Um, it's now a thing. It's now a script that you can run. If you don't give it anything, it will just give you some help, I think. Yeah, OK. No yeah. commands. And I believe install is a command. Install is a command and build. and Yeah, so it has several things. Should I uh, run install this? is the most useful. So Maybe I should activate my Anaconda environment first so I don't mess up my system. <laughs> OK, yeah, do whatever you want. Yes, so I mean, an uh, important thing it, it provides us is install. So, yeah. and install does what, what I said before. So install will take the folder of the package and will copy it into mm -hmm. your central location where your Python is, stores all its uh, packages, which is called site packages. Oh, okay, so it seems like yeah. it worked. If I read using this, my home directory, anaconda live site packages, so installed, it says finished processing dependencies. So yeah, that worked. Yeah, it will also, I think, well, will it, well it will check the dependencies. It will check if you have all the dependencies. Yeah. And I think this will just give an error if you don't, because this Python script does not have a, well, it's not pip, right? It doesn't have a complete dependency resolver. and, uh, and kind of Right, yeah. Um, so okay. when you install it with pip, uh, it will, but, but, but if you just run it uh, as, as a script, um, is it. So now our installation structures are already better. So now our installation instructions is you get this folder and you run our setup script inside the folder and you tell it to install itself. Yeah. So we're, we're getting closer to having like good package code. Yeah. I'm giving an example here in my home directory. I can't import it. If I source, if I activate Anaconda. Yeah. And, and it works. Yeah, so it's been installed from the Anaconda site packages directory. Yeah. So, so now it's there. Okay. okay. So this is good. So Maybe so far a... I can install something at least. Yeah. Okay. It's better, right? Can we make it even easier? Yeah. It's even easier if you don't you don't even have to clone the Git repository. Mm -hmm. so, if you so. just do pip install yeah. calculator and we'll just do it. Um, so this this is how you would uh, like also install other bigger packages. You, you don't always need to clone Git repositories. You can just say pip install, give yeah. it a name. So can we... So there's this exercises one here that tests a local pip install. Should we tell what that means? So we actually, uh... or should we? Yeah, well, yeah, maybe let's just. I guess we can demonstrate it. So here we installed it with Python setup.py install. Hmm. There's also pip yeah. install. So there's a dot here, which means the current directory. So I'm telling pip to install what is in here, yes. which in practice is what I do most of the time. So. Hmm. I hardly ever use setup.py anymore. Yes. I used well, to. Well, you need it, but but uh, pip calls it. So when you do yes. pip, install, what it does is run this setup.py script. Exactly. Okay, so. And how pip occur? I think is this not mm, supposed to I have no idea what this is, but we see it was trying to install it. It said things yeah. like requirements are satisfied. Yeah, it's crazy. Build. Legal even. Yeah. And then at some point it worked out. Okay. But anyway, yeah. So if you do clone something from GitHub or something, pip install and the directory name mm. will install it. And then also try to get all of the necessary dependencies and install them. Yeah. Okay. You can so, even do pip install and give it the URL of your GitHub repository and we'll just oh yeah exactly just download it and then install it. 
So that's a good way actually of, of providing good installations instructions if you don't want to upload it yet to the official pip repository. If you just have some work in progress, it's only on GitHub. Um, you can do this pip install and then a URL and it will just fetch it from the URL and install. So it's also a good, good yeah. way to have a single line installation instructions. Yeah. I don't know if this is exactly the correct GitHub URL scheme, but something like this. Yeah, it, look, it looks a little install. bit like that. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, that's good. But let's take it um, one step further. So we're, we're now pip installable already, um, but we're not part yet of the official like pip, the, 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 what is it called, PyPy, PyPy repository of all packages. Yeah. So let's, okay. let's upload it to that. So... And maybe first, create an account, a PyPy account. But let's not do it on the real, real PyPy um, because it's a little bit clumsy to, to upload our example package to the official repository. Mm -hmm. um, th there's, a, there's a test repository, there's test PyPy, which you can use to do whatever you want. And yeah. we, we don't mess up the, the real repository. But in order to use it, you have to create an account there first. Um, so maybe you can just follow yeah. the link in the lecture notes. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, assuming you already have one. Yeah, and I've confirmed I already have a account there, so okay, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. Okay. So now, if we want to to upload stuff, so we can upload stuff to the test PyPy, and there's a little utility that will make that a bit easier for us, and it's called Twine. I guess that's you... some Monty Python reference. That might very be... <laughs> <laughs> might very well be a Monty Python oh. reference. Okay. Um, so, so do you have that twine command? You uh, might have. And others, otherwise, you can just pip install it. Yeah. So I'm in Conda, so I will. Yeah, twine. You need to install it. So this is installing to my base environment. Well. No. Good enough. Okay. But okay, before so that, there was real... the step in Python setup.py. Yes. So we, we need some. Yeah. So what, 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 what Twine does, Twine will, will, will not try to parse your setup.py and do all that then. Uh, all that Twine does will just upload zip files to PyPy. So we first need to create a zip file for Twine to upload. And that is something our original setup script can do. So we've already seen setup install, um, but this is setup sdist. What that will do, sdist stands for source distribution. It will zip up your code. So what happened here? We see a dist directory. Yeah. For distributions. Dist calculator archidarst and then target gz and the version number. Okay. Yeah, that's our, our little zip file or tar gun zip file. Yep. Um and, and then we can upload with twine. So now that we have that thing, we can tell twine, okay, please upload that zip file to PyPy, but not to the real PyPy. <laughs> Let's uh, say it, okay, so that's a dash r test pi pi. So, okay, we're gonna upload it to the test pi pi, yeah. uh, not the real one. Are we sure this is the right thing? I don't know if you want to do dist star. I think you, you just want that, that one zip file that we created. Yeah. I don't think we want the egg. Yeah, okay. So um, twine upload to the test pi pi. Are we sure file. dash r is the right thing? Maybe I'll check the help first with the dash H option. Okay. And the notice this is made with arc parse, so it shows us this really nice help here. Mm -hmm. uh, repository. Okay, so I guess at least it won't upload to the proper one. So should I do it? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, so it asks your username and password that you, that, that's your account on test.pypy.org that you, uh, Richard, already made. Yeah, so it says it uploaded. All right. There. And there's a URL. Maybe I'll copy that and let's paste it here. I Calculator you know. rkdarst. It tells us this nice pip install command. Uh, so telling it to install from test pi pi, the name. This also tells us the version number pinned if we need this exact version. Hmm. Um, 
oh, here's the readme that I yeah. entered here. The That's page. taken from the long description field, I think, of your Python. So it's not taken from your yeah. readme file. Um, we, we see a readme file here because we like put that into the long description field of our setup uh, yeah. poll. Yeah. And here we see the home page. This is example.org. So that was also defined in the setup.py file. Yeah, we left it at that, right? And probably also, does it tell you your name? No, it does not tell you your name. Uh, the author, no. Here, maintainers, RK Darcy. Oh, there it is. OK. Yeah. Ah, and here's the classifiers. So yeah. Ah, let's see all the things. So that's really, really nice, right? And it will be the same on the real pip repository if you upload it to the real one instead. Yeah. Um, that's always recommended to first upload, of course, to the test one. See how it works. So, okay. so now we should be able to pip install it um, okay. based from this test repository. Let's see. So maybe, maybe I can... Maybe first have to uninstall it because we already have it installed. Find... Uh... No. Yes, okay, so it says it's uninstalled. Right, maybe I'm... move to another directory, so we... Uh... Yeah, I'm bringing in my old terminal here. Oh yeah, new terminal. Uh... Oh, but what was the command? So if it were in the official repository, we could now just type pip install calculator Richard Darth, but we, we've uploaded it to the test repository, so we need to give pip also, oh, by the way, use the test repository, not the real one. And it seemed like it worked. So, yeah. Nice. So now our installations instructions are that command you just typed. So if you want to use this package, you just pip install this. Yeah. That is already pretty easy. Yeah. So what are the other considerations here? Um, when, like, is there some minimum size of code that you would use to do this? Or if it's small, would you sort of leave it on GitHub and give the manual URL? Well, for, for me, it's not so much a, um, a discussion of code size, but more how many people do I think will actually use this? So if it's something I just write and I think, well, maybe my friend and his dog will use it and nobody else, I will just leave it on GitHub. But I have, a, I, have a, I have one project that is essentially one source file, but it's so useful and used by so many people that I did put it, uh, did put it on, uh, on PIP, like on the, on the proper PIP. Um, because when, when it is there, when, when it's a file dependency of many projects, it's really useful to have it in pip because when it's in, in, in the pip repository, people can just list it as one of their dependencies and people automatically install it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a little bit harder. I mean, you can still do it when it's just on GitHub, but it's a little bit harder. Um, yeah. But for me, it's a question, how many people are actually using this? And if it's a, yeah, well, maybe more than five or something, I say, okay, I will, I will go through the trouble, make yeah. an actual yeah. release out of this. Okay. Um, we see building a conda package and sharing it. We could try to um, do that. How much time do we have? We, I think we, we are now at half, half an hour in. Yeah, we're out of time, basically, if we want to do the panel discussion idea. So, That's actually a good idea. Yeah, but let's just say you can do the same thing with conda. Yeah. Um, and actually, it's pretty easy when... Um, the instructor last year demonstrated this. I was like, well, okay, actually... It's not so bad once you have it's not so bad if it's already on pip so now our our package is on pip and when it's on pip you can make a conda package that says well basically it's a pip package so you just the, the conda recipe is yeah. you install it from pip and then it can uh, and then it's pretty easy yeah you have the instructions in there yeah all right okay. so do, do we have any questions in the in the in the hack md yeah. let's see there's pip versus conda and yeah they're basically different yeah. tools so if you scroll to the previous lesson or earlier in the day there's some discussions on the differences between these two there's some comments on the pip install dash e option ah. so this is really need... interesting this is something that i thought was quite useful so it means that it installs it in an editable fashion so when you edit the source ah. code 
the live version is immediately updated. Really, it's not like it's the live version is updated, but the live version is linked directly to the source repository. Yeah. So it's useful when you're so, developing So instead things. of copying the folder into the installation location, it will create a symbolic link between the two. Mm -hmm. right? So you can still, that, I use that all the time uh, yeah. when, when I'm working on a project. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a super useful command if you're developing a package. And then as a developer, you install it like this and then you can just work. Yeah. yeah. There's That's can a yeah. There's the question: Can I install a package in a separate directory, not in the central location? And that's the environment that we did at the beginning. So these days, everything I do is in virtual environments, and I even have a shell alias for installing it. Um, yes, that's the best way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you want to bring mm -hmm. all the instructors here and see if we can get some debates going? Sure. Let's do that.